Hey guys, so we're back again with another reading and this one is a message from your spirit guide. So we're going to see what your spirit guides have to say to you, what kind of clarity and guidance they want to give to you. And I love these readings because they're super open-ended so your guides can come through to say literally anything and give you whatever guidance you really need in this moment. And of course, this is a timeless reading. So whenever you're watching it in the future, it will apply to your current situation. And today we have a beautiful selection of crystals for you guys to choose from. So if one is already calling your name and sticking out to you, you can go ahead and drop down to the comments or the description and fast forward to your pile. If it's your first piggy card reading, you want to go to the crystal that your energy is feeling called to. And that will be the pile with the energy for you and the clarity for you. So don't overthink it. Just go with your first instinct and head to the pile that you really feel pulled into. I'm going to put the numbers up on the screen. And I also want to mention to you guys that I do have my Patreon up with a ton of additional readings. There are over 25 already posted and new ones go up all the time. So come join the party over at Patreon. We have all kinds of subjects from love, career, wealth, spirituality, a lot of different subjects over there and we also do polls to vote on whatever picket cards you guys really want me to do so go ahead and join the party like i said link in my description for that for my patreon and if you guys want a private reading with me you can also get that at my website briarrosetarot.com and I will pull cards specifically for you and your situation whether you have specific questions you want me to answer or you just want generalized channeled guidance either works and so if you would like that you can head down to the link in my description briarrosetarot.com and book yourself in for an appointment so with all of that being said if you guys need more time to decide you can totally feel free to rewind pause and take as much time as you need but we are going to go ahead and jump into pile one hey pile one so for your pick a card you guys got good luck and for your tarot you got the world judgment page of pentacles page of cups and the star so wow these are such positive cards and you guys are being called to really step into a destiny moment here i feel like you guys are being called to do something bold and unexpected something that the people around you might not expect something that even you might not have expected like a year ago or even six months ago, I feel like you are being called towards something that is almost a desire deep in your heart that you guys have kept secret in for a while, even to yourselves. I was actually listening to Naked by Ava Max before this, and it's a song about the vulnerability of letting someone see you naked, not just like physically, but emotionally and I guess mentally. And what was coming to mind for you guys is that sometimes, even for ourselves, we put up these walls or we don't want to tell ourselves what we really want in life. Maybe we have judgments attached to that. Maybe we have ideas of what we should do, what's respectable, what's not respectable, what is you know, good for us, what kind of a life we're supposed to live or what we thought we would be living. And I feel like you guys are really being called to step out of that and be honest with yourselves. And this, what's coming to mind for me, for you guys, is this might have been a long simmering dream that you like put so on the back burner and buried it so deep that you didn't even know you had it. Like you might suddenly come across like an old box of things from your childhood and they're all about, I don't know, going to space or NASA and you're being called to I don't know, apply to be an astronaut or something. Maybe that's pretty intense, but I feel like a lot of you guys are being called to really almost uproot yourselves and change something and do something really big. It might be actually a move. Could even be an international move or international travel with the world card coming out. But I do feel like there's a message for you guys that if you're nervous about this, that luck is on your side and that in a way, this time for you is a reward. You guys have been working through all the hardships. You guys have been working through all the pain. You've been pushing past some of these negative things that have been thrown your way. And I feel like Spirit wants you to know that you have passed the test and now you get to go into kind of the celebration zone that is the world energy. Um, for a lot of you guys though, this is going to look very different. This is going to look 
kind of like a resurrection, which the judgment card talks about, like very different from what you thought. Maybe you had this idea of what success would look like or what happiness would look like. And you're being called to really step boldly into something very different. And maybe this came out of left field. Maybe you suddenly have an idea that seems to come out of nowhere. And the Page of Cups can talk about that, about those intuitive visions we have. And cups is intuitive water energy. So it's dreams. It's the way spirit comes to speak to us in whispers and in nudges and not necessarily like logical mind, you know, more like a calling. And it can be something that doesn't make sense to anyone else and even people might say like are you crazy or like what you you're gonna do what wait that doesn't make any sense why would you do that but we know in our heart we feel spirit talking to us and whispering to us and telling us that that's what we should do and I feel like you guys are being called to again step towards it boldly not to be afraid like I said luck is on your side and you guys I feel like need to have a measure of trust in the universe because also with the star, you know, there's a lot of energy here of like rejuvenation, rebirth, um, being also like massive change happening, a big ending for you guys. Pluto rules the judgment card. So for you guys, you are being pushed into a transform a transformation pluto is transformational energy it's the phoenix rising from the ashes it's taking a negative situation or a dead end and being like you know what i'm actually coming out of this stronger and better and i just heard better faster harder stronger by daft punk um, or harder better faster stronger and yeah i feel like you guys are coming out of this period you've been in of maybe stagnation maybe having a hold on things in your life in a much happier energy and these changes you're making are going to be much more fulfilling the page of cups is a card of enthusiasm and doing what you want to do emotionally not just being like disciplined about it but being like i want this and everyone else might be like okay but that doesn't really make sense or that's not really productive and it's like yeah but i like that and i it makes me feel good and page cards are very young energy they're full of enthusiasm they do what they want to do um even that page of pentacles even though it is pentacle energy so i feel like you guys are being called to step towards what you really want and for a lot of you guys it might be a childhood dream or something you had a dream of a long time ago that you like so put on the back burner and spirit is calling you to really think about what did i love when i was a child what gave me a lot of joy or what is a dream i've had that maybe I was even embarrassed about or I didn't want to tell people about again that Ava Max song is coming to my mind of naked where it's it's about the courage to be vulnerable and I feel like even with ourselves sometimes we don't want to be vulnerable we might stuff down dreams or wants because we think it's lame you know maybe we think it's like cringe to want a relationship and like I should just be independent so I I don't care I'm I'm fine and I'm happy but maybe we're really not or maybe we would want to do a certain career but there's a lot of judgment attached to that career like maybe someone wants to be an influencer but everyone you know talks bad about influencers so then it's like okay i'm not going to do that or you know what i mean maybe you are making a great living as a banker but you want to be an artist and you know people are going to think you're crazy if you give up your job and become an artist but this is really an energy where i feel like it's it's a destiny moment that's been a long time coming a long time simmering and with the Page of Pentacles, I also feel like there's a message that it will pay off for you financially. It's not like you're going to be bereft or you're not going to have um, financial success with it. I do feel like there's an opportunity here. There's a fresh start financially here. So if you're worried about money when it comes to this, if you're like going back and forth about, well, can I afford it? Or like, I'm not going to have the money. I feel like you will be protected and trust like you can trust the universe and i do think that our guides and our angels they so love when we fully step into our destiny when we fully take that moment to trust and to fulfill our dreams it's like they are cheering on the other side they are so excited to see us 
really step into some of those purposes that we came to this planet to fulfill. Some of those dreams that are deep in our heart, they want us to fulfill those things. They want us to get to do those things. They don't want us to play it safe and to just stick in like the safety zone and color inside the lines. They want us to live a life that's vibrant and full of joy and happiness and you know, maybe a little bit of risk. Maybe we wake up in the morning and there's some excitement or there's some uncertainty about what's happening, but that's a life that's meant to be lived, right? Like I just got the image of like, there's a reason why young people aren't allowed in like a retirement home, you know? And it's because like, you're not supposed to be in that energy when you're young. And not to say that there's an age limit towards going towards your destiny. There's certainly not. But it's like, we are, I feel like you guys are being called with these page cards to step into that vibrancy of youth, that boldness of youth where like, you know, I feel like kids and teenagers, like they don't have a lot of fears. They're just like convinced that everything's going to work out or that, you know, they, they take, in fact, like I think statistically a lot of like the riskiest things or like certain crimes are pretty much all committed by like men in their teens, you know, but and I'm not saying anyone should commit a crime, obviously, but I feel like, you know, maybe some of that boldness, that like excitement that kind of tapers off as people age, Spirit is saying like, bring that back, bring back that passion and that fire and that boldness and that unafraidness, that um, confidence and that certainty that everything is going to work out because I feel like the message is that it will and your guides want something have something way better for you in mind so if you're coming up against some fear I feel like you're being called to really push through all of that so let me give you guys your other cards so we got discontent and boredom sacrifice sacral chakra throat chakra and material and spiritual prosperity. So I do feel like there's a message here with discontent and boredom that you guys have, you're not necessarily like happy where you're at right now. So maybe you're afraid to change something, but Spirit's like, okay, but you're already not happy. Your Things are already, maybe they're not horrible for you, but you're not like 100% satisfied. Maybe you guys are a little bored. Maybe your life isn't particularly wild or thrilling. And sure, maybe that's good enough. But like I said, our guides don't want good enough for us. They want amazing. They want happy. They want joyful. They want full of life. They don't want us, us just going through the motions and living a life of dullness and expectation and like scrolling on our phone all day or being on our laptop or watching TV all day or whatever. They want us to be alive and in life and in the currents of it and exploring and pursuing a strong destiny. And I do feel like with the sacrifice card coming out, I can feel the nervousness. I can feel the tension and the kind of scaredness that you guys are feeling and that you're like, okay, but like this is going to take a lot or this is going to be a lot of work or this is going to be a big change and I'm really nervous and it's going to be taking a lot out of me. And I feel like it's kind of like this is a temporary maybe sacrifice for some of you guys. I don't even know if I would use the word sacrifice, but you know, when we make a big change, oftentimes there's like logistics that have to be worked out or it takes work to switch things up. You know, um, if you're changing companies, which definitely the page of pentacles can talk about, um, it's, you know, you have to send your resume out. You have to like send in your two weeks notice. If you're moving, you're going to move somewhere else. You have to pack. If you're traveling, you have to, again, pack. And um, it's a lot of logistical stuff. Or if you're changing careers, maybe you have to go back to school or whatever. But I feel like the payoff is going to be so worth it. I feel like the payoff is going to work out 100%. And with the sacral chakra, you know, that is one of the lower chakras. And it's really concerned with, first of all, feelings of safety, but also with, um, you know, the sexuality and being rooted in life and really enjoying things. And also it's an intuitive chakra. And I feel like a lot of you guys, maybe you have 
you you get intuitions through your sacral chakra or something but it's like i feel like you're really being called to follow your intuition and if you have been worried about feelings of safety or just trying to play it safe in life because maybe you were afraid of something you're really being called to be bold about this to step out on a bit of a limb and to trust that it's going to be okay it's kind of like how the mama bird i just got an image of a mama bird kicking her little baby bird out of the nest and i guess that's what happened Happens. You know, the baby birds don't necessarily want to leave, but they got to do it. And as soon as they get kicked out, they start flapping their wings and they realize they can fly. And I feel like some of you guys are more capable than you even realize. Like, you've got this. You are capable beyond your wildest dreams. You guys, Spirit is telling me also you guys are good communicators with that throat chakra card. You guys are so competent and I feel like you're stepping into your power. We did get the star card as well. So this might be your moment to just shine and to glow up and to have this beautiful energy around you guys material and spiritual prosperity as well so i feel that with this decision it very well might pay off and get you guys like financial success and abundance and again it might not seem like that at first it might be like okay but i'm leaving this high paying job and switching career paths and i'm gonna have to take a salary hit but if that's what spirit has put in your heart something big something bold something intuitive that only makes sense to you i think that that is a clear sign that you should go ahead and do it um, and with the throat chakra, what's coming to my mind is how sometimes we can, and throat chakra isn't necessarily being in the head, but I am thinking about mercury and how with mercury, it can be such a great communicator and has so many gifts, but also sometimes we can be too much in our head and we can kind of overthink things and we can kind of, um, try to reason it out and i do feel like a lot of this is intuitive for you and a lot of this is a callback to like childhood and to um dreams you had in the past like you planted these seeds a long time ago and maybe you forgot about them but like they're ready to come true so we also got peaks of joy wishing well field of dreams and dry desert so like so positive honestly i feel like you some of you guys are just having your dreams come true right now and i almost feel like it's funny because you guys are starting to get nervous now that some of your manifestations have come true you're actually your nerves are kind of ramping up and you're starting to be like okay i know i asked for this but like i'm not so sure um and i feel like spirit is saying don't don't mess this up. You know what I mean? Not to say that you guys can mess up a destiny moment, but I do feel like we have these things kind of faded for us and they kind of come in cycles. Like these opportunities, they don't just come every single day. Um, a big opportunity destiny moment, I feel like it's like you get one and then if you let it pass, you'll get another, but it might take a while. It might take a few months or it might take even a few years. And so don't miss a bold amazing opportunity because i almost feel like some of you guys have sacrificed or made decisions in the past where you felt called to a destiny moment but you kind of ran away from it or you were nervous you talked yourself out of it you were like that's too much um but what would you do if you knew this was going to pay off for you if you knew with certainty that it could work out for you because i think that this decision you're making is going to lead to these peaks of joy um it's going to lead to this wishing well filled with gold it's going to lead to a lot of things that you might have thought was really not an option and <laughs> spirit is making it happen for you guys spirit is really making your dreams come true um and, and these are cards that can talk about really needing to enjoy the moment and be thankful. So I think some of you guys, it's almost like maybe this destiny moment came out of the blue or surprised you because I almost feel like some of you guys haven't had time to process it and you're a little like, wait a minute, what do I do? And I feel the message is for you to take it in, don't be afraid of it, and to appreciate and be grateful to your guides because they set this up for you and this is their gift to you and don't be afraid of it know that it's an amazing gift it's kind of like you know if you have an amazing dad and he gets you like a christmas gift under the tree on christmas 
you're not going to think that inside of it is actually like a cobra or something or some horrible item that like like a pile of trash you're gonna know that like if you were asking him for like a little hot wheels car or a barbie or whatever the case may be that that's probably what's going to be under that tree so if you've been asking for some kind of change some kind of positivity a lover a um a career boost financial boost a better life, a happier life. Trust that this moment is here and not to be afraid. Sometimes those destiny moments can really bring up our fears, our inadequacies, our sense of like, can I do this? Can I handle this? Am I good enough for this? And that can be the main saboteur that we have in our lives. It's like our own inner compass that's like, oh, I'm not good enough for this. I can't do this. I can't handle this. And I feel the message from spirit is really that you can. So let me pull from this deck and see what other messages we get for pile one. What do you want pile one to know? Spirit, we got rainbow blessings. Blessings are showering your life. I'm telling you guys, this is so positive. Don't mistake this moment for, even though it might feel, it might feel scary, but Spirit is saying, that this is what you wanted. We got hold the course, stay focused. Keep in mind that this is something you guys wanted and prayed for and manifested and worked for. So if this is coming and it feels like suddenly your life just got thrown into hyper speed, because I think sometimes that's how like blessings work is like maybe things are really calm for a while and you're kind of like, okay, nothing's really happening. Um, and then suddenly the blessings come in and it's like, oh my God, wait, what, what, what is this? And it all starts happening at once. And you're kind of like, especially if you've been in a stagnant energy for a while, you might not trust, trust it. You might not know how to handle it. You might be like, wait a minute, hold on. I just got used to this. I was chilling. And now suddenly I have like blessings coming from everywhere and like, what's going on? Um, and what the image I have in my mind that spirit is showing me is how like, and I'm not a farmer, so I don't know if like this is exactly right. But as far as I understand it, farmers will go through like their sowing seeds and their, or their sowing season, their planting season, and then they've got to wait. You know, they've got to wait for the winter to pass and maybe the spring to pass. I don't know the exact timing, but when everything comes into bloom and is ready to be picked, then they have to act on that really fast. So I think it happens in summer, but I could be wrong or late summer. I could be wrong. But when that moment comes where like all the grain is ready to go or all the apples are ready to be picked, you have got to get to that tree or to that field quick. You know, you can't just be like, oh yeah, I don't, you know, I actually don't really feel like it. I kind of got used to it being winter and me just like chilling in bed. So I think I'm just going to keep doing this and it, it'll just stick around, right? Like, no, you have to get going. You have to accept that like, that day you wanted is here. And I feel like these are seeds you guys planted coming into bloom, but you've got to be the one to step up and get that harvest and allow it into your life and not to run away from it, to step towards it with gratitude and open arms and happiness and to know that you deserve it and not to be scared by some of these things. Because I feel like a lot of you guys, this is your destiny. This is something you've been called to for a really long time. And it's almost like some of you guys got so used to this dry desert energy. You got so used to things not being great. And another thing that's coming to my mind with dry desert is also if you've been thinking of making a move or something. I've talked about this a bunch of times, how since I've lived in so many different places, and I love paying attention to like the seasons and the weather and the sky and the trees and stuff like that. So anyway, I've always notice like I'm I I technically I personally am someone who likes seasons and whenever I've lived in a place where it's warm year round like everyone loves it and I totally get it it is really nice when it's winter and everyone else is freezing and there's like snowstorm reports on the news and you're like oh great well it's 70 degrees outside and it's sunny and I get to go like work out outside but for me personally, I'm more of a winter, fall person. So I really tend to miss the seasons. And I think that sometimes people can overhype the no seasons thing because actually there's so much beauty in like winter. There's so much beauty in 
fall. And there's so much beauty in, of course, the spring and summer, especially in those um, seasonal places. Because the thing about being in a very warm climate year round is you just don't get spring and you just don't get summer the way you do in a seasonal place. You just don't. Sure, you get a little bit of a difference, but it just doesn't change very much. And if anything, it can just get too hot. And contrast that to when you're in a place that is seasonal and the trees just bloom so beautifully and the, there's flowers in the spring and everything just comes so alive and so green. And I think that if you try to plant like a tree, like an oak tree or a chestnut tree or whatever that's used to being on say the East Coast or in the Midwest in a very rainy you know, seasonal type of environment and you tried to move it into like the Mojave Desert or into like South Florida or into um, California, S Southern California, that just wouldn't grow to its full height. And sometimes some of you guys are being called to replant yourselves into a place where you're going to really thrive and you're going to really grow. And sometimes I think we, we go where we, we, people tell us we should go, right? Like people say, oh, well, being year round of sun, that would be the dream. But if you're a little oak tree, you're not going to do so well in year round sun. You need some of that rain. You need some of that winter. Even if all your trees, even if all your leaves go dead in that winter time, that's what you need. And only you can know that for yourself. What works for a cactus or anyone else is not necessarily going to work for you. So I think some of you guys are being called to go somewhere where you feel happy, you feel comfortable. And if no one else gets it, whether it's a workplace, whether it's a living situation, whether it's it's a career path, whatever it may be. If you're being called to uproot yourself and to replant yourself somewhere else, you need to listen to that. If spirit has put that in your heart over and over and over and you're seeing signs and every time you turn on the radio, it's like um, maybe like you're thinking of moving to New York City, just as an example. And every time you turn on the TV show, there's like a show set in New York City. It's like Law and Order is on or Sex in the City is on or whatever, you know, all these friends um or you know you every time you're like scrolling something online there's like or on instagram there's a bunch of shots from new york city or you just keep getting reminded of new york city or wherever you know it doesn't have to be new york it can be anything it can be a different job change or whatever but if you feel like spirit has put something in your heart that's what you need to listen to and screw the logic of the situation screw what anyone else might say say about it because that's not for you. Like I said, an oak tree can't grow in the desert. And even though people might be saying, oh, it's so amazing in like those really sunny places. If you're an oak tree, it's not going to be so great for you to be in that warm, balmy South Florida heat. You know what I mean? I don't think. Uh, maybe they grow them in South Florida, but I feel like you'd probably do a lot better up in the Northeast or whatever. So what what someone else might not get for us is still doesn't mean that that's not for us. And we don't really have to explain to anyone else. What we have to do is align ourselves with what spirit wants for us, with what our guides want for us, and what our heart is telling us. And I feel like if you guys are feeling this fear, this nervousness, this uncertainty about this situation. You need to know that it's all going to work out. It's going to be amazing. I'm actually so excited for you guys. I feel like later on, you're going to look back at this moment and be like, destiny moment. Wow. And you know, I also just heard in my mind, The Path Appears, which is the name of an Oprah book that she did, um, where she did a bunch of quotes about finding your destiny, finding your path. And I feel like that's such a great, in my opinion, um, way to say that sometimes we don't know the whole path. Sometimes we don't get to see every step along the way. We just have to trust from spirit. We just have to trust that we'll get there. Sometimes that path is kind of hidden in the bushes or speaking of overgrown summer. I know for me, I, I'm thinking of a hike. Spirit is bringing this hike to me that I did in Virginia and it was like such an overgrown path. And like Virginia is so pretty in the summer. It's so green. It's very, it, but this path was really overgrown. And I couldn't really see like, usually, you know, when you're on a trail, you can see like 10 feet, 20 feet, 30 feet ahead, right? I couldn't even see like four feet ahead. Each step on the trail, I had to kind of be like, okay, I think it's going there. I think it's that. I think it's, I think 
that was a little clearing, but it was hard because I was like, I don't think anyone's hiked this trail in like, I don't know, weeks because no one, there. it was just that overgrown and it is very verdant in the summer, but it was really overgrown. But there's kind of some beauty in that. I really loved that hike and it stays in my mind as like, it was so much more fun than just mindlessly like walking down a trail and not really paying attention. And so sometimes I think we want to see the whole, we want to see the whole picture. How is it going to work out? What's going to happen next? What is this going to lead to? What's going to be the end results of this? You know, we want all those answers all at once. And I think sometimes spirit like cloaks those things. Sometimes we can't really see why something is going to work out, how it's going to work out, but we can trust in our heart. Sometimes we're not being shown that for a reason. Sometimes if we knew the fullness of our destiny, we would get scared. We would chicken out and we'd be like, oh my God, no, that's too much for me. Um, and maybe that's kind of the feeling you guys are having right now. Maybe things are starting to go so good that your nerves are coming out and you're starting to be like, wait a minute, good stuff like this doesn't happen to me. And I feel like you really need to know that this is this is something that you, A, totally deserve. You guys do deserve these blessings. And B, this is a moment you need to step into with boldness, with gratitude, with openness. You know, again, Spirit is bringing up to my mind that Ava Max song, Naked, because the song is also about how sometimes when you really like someone though, you shy away from kind of becoming vulnerable with them, right? Like it's easier to pretend to be uh, like stoic and like, I don't really care than to be like, I really like this person and to really open our heart up to them. But that's where the magic happens is when we are willing to be vulnerable. And I'm not just talking about relationships, although that might apply to your situation, but I'm also talking about in life. Sometimes when we step towards the destiny moment that we've been called to so deeply, it scares the heck out of us because maybe we were okay when we were living kind of a boring life and things weren't going so well, but we knew what to expect. We didn't have high expectations. It's kind of like sometimes it's easier to date someone that you don't really care about because if the date goes bad or they don't like you or you break up, your heart's not going to be broken. You don't have to worry about it. Who cares? But as we all know, all of us who might watch or make love readings, that's not where the heart really gets activated. The heart turns on and activates when we're open, when we really care, when we really like the person. Those are the relationships that where the magic happens, where they stick in our mind, where they stay in our heart for years and years. And it's, it's, we need that vulnerability. Whenever you feel vulnerable like that, whenever you feel nervous about like, oh my God, is this going to work out? Am I going to be okay? How is this going to happen? Take that as actually a positive for you guys, because I feel like it's that arrow pointing you that like, yes, you're on the right path. When you care that much about something, when you want that something so bad, that's a good sign that you're aligned with real love, with your heart, that your heart is turned on and activated and everything is firing on all cylinders. So yeah, pile one. I am so excited for you guys. I feel like this is just going to be an amazing journey for you guys. You are going to have such great stories. I can't wait to hear them. Um, maybe you guys can tell me in a little while, like if six months later, whatever this was, or maybe you already know what it is, but I am excited for you guys. I feel like this is such a beautiful, exciting, special energy, and you, your life is going to get a lot more exciting very soon. So I really hope it resonated. Pile one, let me know how it did in the comments. I love hearing from you guys, so definitely let me know your thoughts and make sure to like this video and make sure to subscribe, turn notifications on so you find out as soon as I post. And if you guys want to join my Patreon, I have a ton of additional readings over there. So click the link in my description if you want to join us over on Patreon and new readings go up all the time. So definitely check. Oh, and you'll get access to over 25 existing readings. So you'll get access to all of that, but new ones go up all the time. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Oh, and if you want a private reading from me, you can also get that at my website, briarrosetarot.com. So with all of that being said, thank you guys so much for watching and I'm sending you so much love and light pile one. I hope you all have an amazing day and take care of yourselves and I'll see you next time. Bye. 
Hey Pile 2, so for your pick a card, you guys got Dreams. And for your tarot, you got the Three of Wands, Nine of Wands, Death card, Two of Wands, the Star, and the Knight of Swords. So a lot of you guys are being called to broaden your horizons, possibly to make a major move. It could be a move in career. It could be a move in home and living situation, which I'm definitely getting for a lot of you guys. I am feeling that this might be a call to move homes, move where you live. But Spirit is saying to really look at all of your options. You can see that with the three of wands coming out over the two of wands and I didn't even notice that they came out on top of each other like that but I love that because you can see with the three of wands he's standing on the top of a mountain looking out over the land and seeing everything that's there it's almost like he's planning or it's the old school version of looking at a map and kind of seeing like oh I could go there I could go there oh that's a nice little meadow right there oh there's a nice little forest maybe I could build something on the edge of the forest you know so a lot of you guys are being called to really look at things because I almost feel like there's a message that there's certain options available to you that you might not have considered at first or you might have dismissed it or been like, oh, that that's crazy. Well, no, I could never do that. I mean, yeah, that sounds awesome, but like that wouldn't happen for me. And spirit is like, you might have more options than you realize. You might, some of you guys might be feeling a little trapped or a little stuck. And it's like, hey, why don't you look at this and really get down to like the brass tacks? Because there's a lot of cards here also about planning. We did get the Knight of Swords. We got the Two of Wands. And there's an act, there's an energy here of like, hey, look at the situation. Maybe even look at like legal documents or looking at... Um, looking at options, weighing your options. Maybe if you're thinking of moving, doing your research and finding like looking at like different homes or houses or apartments in different places and really considering it deeply and maybe even broadening your idea of what could be an option for you. Like I said, maybe you think you have to do things a certain way and it's like maybe you think, oh, I got to live in this town and then there's like the perfect place for you and it's in a town over or maybe it's even in a totally different state or something. Um, I just feel like a lot of you guys are being called to make a move, to step towards your destiny, and maybe to change your physical living situation and to move out and to, like I said, really look really look down deep to all the options you have with the nine of wands that can talk about one kind of last challenge before your final success before you finally accomplish something so maybe there's a lot of effort involved in this change maybe like if it is a move you're going to have to pack up all your stuff and there's an energy here of having that resilience and understanding that yeah it is probably going to be a lot of work but you can get through it you're almost there because i feel like this ending or this change change you're making is going to be really amazing. We did get the death card, so it might really change things for you and really alter a lot in your life. And we also got the star card, which is such a beautiful card of blessings and also of transformation after hardship because it does come after the tower card. So it really is an energy of like, I went through some difficulty and now is my time to shine bright like a star. Now is my time to have everything I wanted. But there is going to be some logistics involved. There is going to be some planning, some paperwork, some having to take care of things um, that you guys are going to have to do. And maybe that's not really what you want to do. Maybe that's that nine of wands energy where it's kind of like one final push and like, yeah, you're really tired and you're kind of exhausted and you're, you are ready for a break, but you just got to get through this stage. And then I feel like your break is coming and there is going to be a period of rest and happiness and rejuvenation. But for a lot of you guys, this is stepping out of your comfort zone, looking at almost like a different area, a different place you could work, a different place you could live, and really planning everything out and really not limiting yourself in any way because I think so many of us, we have certain ideas of how things are supposed to go and it's not even like conscious. It's not even like we are consciously thinking like, I can only ever live in this town because obviously if our conscious mind caught that, we would be like, that's crazy. Of course I can move anywhere. But deep down, we're only doing research to live in like the same town or we're only you know, maybe we don't like our career and we don't like our job. We hate our boss, but we keep t telling ourselves like, well, I have to work at this company. I mean, I, I mean, I have to work here. I only like, I mean, my paycheck is this. I'm like, 
I'm supposed to fill out, like I'm supposed, if I can last for two years and it'll look really good on my resume. And it's like, well, probably if you apply to a different company and you have a year and a half there, or even if you have six months there, um, and we have an amazing interview and we smash it out of the park and we align ourselves with spirit and destiny and we pray and ask for help from our angels, we'll get aligned with the exact right person to do the interview and they'll be like, well, they only had six months of work history at that other place, but you know what? They were freaking awesome in the interview and they are exactly what I want for my team and we just vibed and I absolutely want them at this office. You know what I mean? So sometimes we can get into these like limiting thought loops where we just feel so stuck. We allow situations to stress us out. We allow ourselves to feel like, oh God, this is my only option. When we have so many options, we can change it at any moment. We have endless opportunities to shift our destiny. So I feel like a lot of you guys are in the process of either making that move that's going to be so much better for you, so much more positive. Maybe it might be dreams coming true for you. And also there might be an energy of you guys getting messages through your dreams and actually getting communication from spirit, from your higher self, and them kind of pointing you to whatever this change is because I do feel like it's something that spirit might have put in your heart. It might be like a destiny moment that your guides are kind of calling you to. And sometimes when we get uncomfortable in a certain situations, when we have like that horrible boss who's really nasty to us, that's not actually us being punished. We're growing through that situation or we're being called to end it. Maybe we would have stayed stuck in that accounting job even though we always wanted to become a guitarist, you know? But we have this horrific boss who's just so awful that we end up being like, okay, you know, you know what? I can't do this. And we randomly quit the job. And then it's like, well, I'm home all day. I've been sending out resumes. It hasn't really worked. Why don't I just like apply to this little guitarist career, or po post some guitar music on YouTube and see what happens. And that's the destiny moment that thrusts us into what we always wanted. So sometimes we get very hung up on like the negative stuff and like, what's not working and we don't realize that that's the redirection from god that's god being like mm -mm, we're done with this energy like i'm taking you out of here and so we're gonna have to make this a little uncomfortable so you know it's time to leave so you know that you're not going to tolerate it anymore because i do feel like again there's something greater and something that you guys really want like down in your soul you really want this change you really are ready for it deep down you are really excited for it. You've been craving this. You've been, you know, hoping for something different. You've been hoping to fulfill yourself more. And whatever this change is, don't be afraid of that. If it's something you would be like normally like, no, I'm not going to do X, Y, Z, or that's not the kind of person I am. Or you might be mentally closed off. Like I said, sometimes we get into these patterns. We don't even realize that we're limiting ourselves. We don't even realize that like, we think we have to act a certain way or dress a certain way or live in a certain place or work in a certain field or whatever, date a certain person. And then we kind of miss out on those opportunities because we limit ourselves. And it's kind of like taking all your shackles off yourself and taking all the limits and realizing that we can do whatever we want. We get to choose our own adventure in this lifetime. So if we want to do something totally crazy that maybe no one else understands, that's our choice. We get to decide that and our guides will support us in that decision as long as it's not like hurting someone else. Our guides will allow us to do that if it's going to bring us happiness and joy. They want us to be happy. They want us to be joyful and satisfied and fulfilled. So if you are being called to step out and be a little bold, I think Spirit is saying this decision might require some planning. And so, you know, make sure you're doing all of that. Make sure you're doing all the steps you need to take in this process. You're not just rushing it. You're not just rushing in. But I I feel like it's going to be really successful and it's going to make you guys a lot happier. So let's get some more cards. So we got shadow, material harvest, balance, passion ignited, and suffering in silence. So a lot of you guys might have been kind of suffering in silence or just being really stoic about a situation, even to yourself. Maybe you're not admitting that like you're really unhappy about this. You, you're, you're not satisfied in like a relationship or at a job or whatever. And again, I think partially the process is just 
being willing to admit it to ourselves, being willing to take in the situation. It's almost like sometimes we can gaslight ourselves, right? And be like, oh, it's not that bad. Oh, like, that, well, that didn't really happen like that. Well, it's not quite, well, I, I can deal with it. It's okay. I mean, I'm not really happy on my job. And like, my boss is kind of crazy, but you know, everyone has problems. And we don't realize that like, yeah, everyone has problems, but it's not okay for a boss to be like screaming at you all day long. And if you're leaving work and feeling super strong, stress and exhausted, then that's a big red flag. We don't have to put up with that. We can make a life for ourselves that's full of joy, happiness, fulfillment. We are not supposed to live life in a pile of negativity and just trudging along and just having to put up with trash. You know what I mean? And there's so many different ways. Of course, everyone's situation is different, but there's always a route a different path like we see on these wand cards. There's always a path. If we can get up high enough, we can get up to like the mountain peak. We can start seeing like, okay, that's the pathway out of here. Okay, I could, you know what? That forest is really deep and thick. So maybe I won't go through that, but there's a meadow 20 yards to the left. So I'm just going to snake through that. Or maybe I don't want to swim across that river so I can... Uh, there's a little crossing over on that side. And so I'll go there, you know? So sometimes we just have to take that higher perspective to see the way out. And I feel like if you are feeling really stuck or if you're ready for this change and you're already in the process of making it happening, happen, there's a message to you that what is on the other side of this change and this difficult um, decision to leave something behind, because this is reminding me of the Six of Swords, um, is going to be so much positivity and so much happiness. Um, and sometimes I think like we don't even want to be honest with ourselves about what we really want. And the shadow card is bringing that up to me. Like I said, we get into these ideas of I'm supposed to be this way, I'm supposed to be that way. And maybe we think certain things that we want, it's really embarrassing. Like, oh, it's it's sad that I think about getting a boyfriend. It's sad that I want a lot of money. It's That's embarrassing. I should only want to be like this perfect spiritual like person who never cares about money at all. So I'm never going to mention it when maybe that money would make us really happy and would bring us a joyful, abundant, beautiful lifestyle where we could even give to charity and stuff like that. So I think in life, you have to get really granular about what you really want, whatever that is, in, and really getting specific, not just saying necessarily, well, I want wealth, but maybe what kind of career we really, really want, or maybe not just saying, well, I want to live somewhere new, but like what, what kind of place really stirs our soul? What kind of place would truly make us feel our happiest or what kind of lifestyle would make us feel our happiest? And where can we live that would support that? What is that dream that's in our heart that maybe when we hear someone else doing it, we get really jealous. Sometimes that can be a way of pointing us in the right direction. Obviously jealousy is not a high vibrational emotion and you shouldn't be trying to feel it. But if someone is really provoking that in you, sometimes we can learn from our shadow side and realize that, you know, that's pointing us to what we really want. If we get irrationally angry when we see some influencer posting a photo with her boyfriend, maybe that's a sign to us that we really want a relationship when we've been kind of lonely. Or if we get really mad when they're posting a photo like at a fashion shoot and we think like they don't even have a good sense of fashion. Okay, maybe maybe you want to go into fashion. Maybe you really care about fashion and you would love to like open a clothing line and maybe there's a way you can do that because you can do whatever you want in life. You know what I mean? So if something's provoking that negative emotion in you, it's sometimes that like arrow pointing in a certain direction, telling us what would bring us a lot of joy and happiness. I love this Passion Ignited card because to me, that really shows this power that comes over us when we're really aligned with what we truly love. And sometimes it's things that like we bury down deep, like maybe we were into it as a kid, but we thought it was kind of stupid, so we stopped doing it. Or we really had this dream as like a teenager, but then we were like, oh, I have to grow up. And next thing I know, I'm at college and then I have to stay in this college town and you know um, all my friends are getting married so I guess I should get married and to me that passion ignited card is just about really feeling the power that comes when we are truly aligned with our deepest interests and not someone else's interests for us not what someone else wants for us but what we want and even just that day-to-day -day taking pleasure in the daily things like 
enjoying our schedule, enjoying waking up and the view we have outside or enjoying what we eat for breakfast, enjoying how we um, get some exercise or how we spend our day, what we do in our day-to-day life, um, enjoying the work we do, enjoying all the things that are in our life. And if something is taking away from that feeling of alignment, of feeling joy, of feeling that spark and passion and look like the look on her face, she just looks so happy and overjoyed. If we're not feeling that way, then maybe there's something that needs to shift and change to align us with that. And with the material harvest card, I also feel like there's a message that if you guys do make that change, that there will be a financial payoff for you and that you will have this kind of financial um, like reward for stepping into your destiny because our guides love to see us do that. They love to see us align with our highest you know, possible soul mission. They love to see us aligned with our best possible timeline for this lifetime. Um, and I do feel like your guides have been trying to reach you guys through your dreams and through your intuitions and sending you guys these kinds of messages. So I, yeah, I feel like a lot of you guys, maybe you're living in a situation where you're stressed. Maybe you're working in a situation where you're stressed. Maybe you're in a relationship that takes a, a lot of your emotions away from you where you're feeling negative all the time. And if that's the case, you know, of course, shadow work is always a great idea to do on ourselves to make sure we're not like projecting. But I think a lot of times, again, I think we can tend to gaslight ourselves because it's almost like it's harder to admit when something doesn't work. It's harder to admit when like our boss is just completely toxic and there's no solution. Sometimes it's easier to blame ourselves and say like, no, I I overreacted and it was good that she threw a stapler at me because I was out. I was being out of pocket by asking her when the report was would be done. So I deserve to have the stapler thrown at me. And she was trying to be nice. You know what I mean? We do that to ourselves, I feel, so much of the time where we doubt ourselves, we doubt our judgments, we doubt our intuitions. And I feel like if you've had this feeling nagging at you of like, this is not working, it's time to make the change. It's time to step towards that boldly and to not look back and just go for it. Just go ahead with it. Because life is not supposed to be about suffering in silence. As I was saying that, I looked down at the card and I saw that. But yeah, life is not about suffering. It's not about just getting through things. I love this balance card because to me, that's like work hard, play hard. And, you know, having balance in our lives means in our life means we don't just have like, okay, I have to work all the time and I really hate it, but I'm making money. That's not balance. Life balance is like, I'm working really hard and I love my day off. I love my time that I'm spending with my friends. I feel really happy with where I am. I feel happy with where I live. I feel happy um, with all those things. So if you're not able to have a work-life balance, that's a problem as well. And if you guys are in an energy where you're kind of like, well, I have to do this. I don't really have time for the balance in my life, but you know, this is what I have to do. I feel like you should know that when we're in a good place emotionally, when we're feeling really good, I think that that boomerangs to all aspects of our life. When we are happy and we have contentment in our lives, then we're able to manifest more money. We're able to do better in our career. When we have our life filled with things that make us feel good, with things that makes us that make us feel happy and fulfilled and excited, and we wake up in the morning with a feeling of like, yes, the day is going to be awesome, then everything gets better. So if you're in a situation that's really causing you stress and, you know, making that hard for you to wake up and be super happy, then you've got to kind of find a way to change that, either changing your mindset or a lot of times changing your physical reality. And I do feel like you guys are being called to really change your physical actual reality in this and make those moves. So let's get some more cards. We also got home, cleaning house, magic stream and movement. So speaking of moving, I feel like a lot of you guys are being called to make a physical move. It's so funny how we have so much energy about moves and home. And I really feel like a lot of you guys are being called to maybe change your location, move out. If that's something that's been on your mind for a really long time, I feel like this is your confirmation from spirit that you should make that happen. And there is a message that there might be a lot of work involved if this is a move. Of course, you, you're you going to have to pack. You're going to have to like clean your house or clean your apartment. Um, so like being aware of that and being able to plan in advance and get everything together is always a really great step. And 
you know, um, keeping all of that in mind and making sure you get down done kind of those things in the physical reality, I feel like is going to be obviously something coming up in your life if you do make that move. So just, I guess, having that preparation, having that in mind is going to be really key for you guys. But yeah, I think that if you are nervous about some kind of a move, if you guys are kind of like, well, is it that bad? Well, I'm kind of okay in my comfort zone. Things are fine. Like, I don't know, this is kind of nerve wracking. I'm moving out of a small town or I'm moving somewhere totally different. I feel like you need to know that it's going to really be amazing for you. And you guys are going to, I think, be really overjoyed by the results of it. You're going to be super happy with what spirit does for you in this situation. So really just not to be afraid. And I think really the question for you guys is, does this align with my kind of goals and dreams that spirit has put in my heart? Because I think so much of the time, we kind of try to twist ourselves into a pretzel to make something work, right? Like we're like, it would be really great if I was great at math, and I could become an accountant, and I could make a lot of money doing that. But maybe you you hate math, and maybe it makes you miserable. So maybe you trying to be an accountant is the total wrong thing. Or maybe you're like, I really, really, really want to be a singer. But you don't really listen to music that much and you don't like, you know, it doesn't really stir your soul in that way. Maybe there's some other reason you felt called to be a singer. Like, you know, maybe you, you, what you really want is to have some kind of a platform and to have people listen to you and have people to be focused on you. And that's okay. And being willing to confront that in ourselves and be honest about what the root is, I think is like the key. Um, but I think so much of the time we try to stuff ourselves into like a box that like that would be really great if that worked. And I feel like there's something kind of magical that happens when we're aligned with the stream and the current of life, when we're not fighting against it, trying to make something work that doesn't, but we're really going along with spirit has put this in my soul. And now it's happening and I'm flowing along with it. I'm allowing kind of the stream of life, the current of life to carry me along to my destiny. So maybe something happens that's a little frightening. Maybe you are preparing for a move and it's to a totally new type of area and you're really nervous or you're heading off to college and you're really really nervous about how it's going to go. But I think embracing that, not being afraid of that and understanding that if something's not working, it's not working. There's no reason to try to twist yourself into a pretzel or to uh, try to change yourself or try to like hope and pray that like, oh, maybe it's going to get better one day. And maybe if I really am optimistic, something will change. Well, you know, maybe, I mean, being optimistic is always a good idea, but you also have to be realistic and con confront the realities of a situation. If it's not working for you, it's not working for you. And it's great to find a situation that will work for you because there's so many options out there. So maybe thinking about the things that are in your life that might cause you stress or might really, um, you know, irritate you or get under your skin and finding ways for you to remove them. Like if there's a coworker that is always sending you crazy emails, maybe finding a way not to answer that email. <laughs> or, you know, if you, um, maybe you could tell a coworker, like, I've been having problems with my email. I don't know why, but I don't get your emails. And like next time, if you have a problem, just write it down or just come t like, if, I don't know, maybe there's some, tell it to like, tell it to Bob and have him email me and then I'll just, I'm sorry to like involve Bob, but like just have him send me it. And maybe you won't get as stressed out because Bob doesn't try to send you passive aggressive weird emails. So if there is news, he'll just tell it to you straight and you won't get like irritated. You know what I mean? But finding ways to like remove that stress from our life and pushing ourselves to take that risk when we have the opportunity to present itself present itself for something a lot better. Um, so let me get some of these cards for pile two. What messages do you have for pile two, spirit? What messages do you have for pile two? Oh my gosh, so much energy about you guys moving physically. I really think you guys are in this pile definitely going to be making a move soon. And maybe you've been going back and forth in your mind about like, should I move? Maybe it's not so bad. And I feel like spirit is like, it is bad. Come on. Like, don't, don't like twist yourself. Don't like get into your own head now and like convince yourself that I, I keep hearing don't gaslight yourself. So I feel like maybe you guys have been trying to like put on, you know, a bright, 
situation about it and maybe it really is that bad and it's time for you to bounce and maybe that was the message about maybe you have more options than you realize maybe there's a different maybe you're like oh I can't leave this situation because of my lease and maybe there's a way for you to get out of it you know um, maybe there's something you could do you could talk to someone and you could find a way to leave um, so yeah I think a lot of you guys it's like you're going to be stepping into a new home or a new living situation that gives you a lot more comfort where you're able to really enjoy it because life is not just meant to be survived and just like plotted along through and like, oh gosh, this is horrible, but okay, I, I have to be here. I signed a lease, so I have to stay here for the full lease term. No, there's ways to get out of it. There's ways to reorient yourself find a new place to live and i do think you guys are being pushed into really being bold about this not being afraid not letting your anxiety get in the way about this um because i feel like you're divinely protected on this on this path let's see what other messages what messages do you have for pile two spirit Oh my gosh, so funny. Like this is looks exactly like the three of wands. Impasse, reflect and redirect your energy and choosing your path, all is possible. So I feel like with these cards, maybe the current situation you're in right now, your energy isn't really um, valued. Like maybe people around you don't really like you or don't really get you or don't really respect you. Or the living situation you're in is just really not a great vibe and environment and for whatever reason you know and um so maybe it's like instead of trying to make this situation work instead of trying to force it to work why not just leave it behind why not just save your beautiful precious energy and direct it towards what you want I think so much of the time we stay in situations that might be kind of toxic or bad or whatever because we're like, I gotta make this work. I have to, I, we feel trapped. We feel like we have to do this. Like, well, I can't just like, I, ch I can't just like break up with my boyfriend or I can't just like stop talking to her. She's my best friend and she needs me. She's going through a lot. Well, I mean, you can stop talking to her and maybe you might feel bad about it in the moment, but you know, if it's really coming through and like affecting your life and causing you a huge amount of stress, maybe that's what you need to do. I have to, li I have to finish out my lease term. I, you know, I signed a year long lease and it's only been a couple months. Okay. Well, you can leave. You, there's options. You can pay to get out of the lease. You can talk to someone. You know what I mean? You can find a way. You can give two months notice. So we always have so many options and sometimes we just don't see them. We allow our mind to get into like this panic of like, I'm stuck. I'm in this. I can't get out. Um, and the reality is, is that if there's a wall you're facing, if you are in an impasse, just withdraw your energy and head it head elsewhere because your energy will be appreciated in another situation we have so many more possibilities when we realize and sometimes we get really stuck down in that valley feeling very trapped or in the middle of the woods feeling really trapped not realizing that if we climb up to that higher mountain peak like you can see here and take a look around there's a million different routes to get out of it it's kind of like if you've ever been like driving and then you get lost and you're just like feeling upset like oh I'm completely lost I don't know where to go I'm stuck and then you like zoom out on your map and you realize oh I just need to take that way oh okay that's no problem at all you know um so yeah I think you guys need to know that like if you're if there's anything causing you a lot of stress causing you a lot of problems adding to your like making your cortisol spike and making you really unhappy then finding ways and thinking really critically and allowing yourself to explore all options about how to remove that from your life you're not obligated to any person place thing company you're obligated to yourself to live out your highest destiny to live out your life purpose and if someone's taking that away from you you're getting upset it's causing you stress every day that's something you guys need to really think about ending so 
yeah, I think that is what I have for you pile too. So I really hope it resonated guys. Let me know if it did in the comments. I love hearing from you guys and make sure to give this reading a big thumbs up, hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on. And if you want to see more of my readings, you can also check out my Patreon where I post all my additional readings and I have over 25 that you'll get access to if you sign up and new ones go up all the time. So check it out if you want to join. That will be at the link in my description. And if you want a private one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can also get that at briarrosetarot.com. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And I will be back very soon for another reading. I'm sending you guys so much love and light. Have an amazing day, guys. Take care. Bye. Hey, pile three. So for your picket card, you guys got trust. And for your tarot, you got the full judgment, six of swords, four of swords, the high priestess, knight of pentacles, and the ten of swords. So a lot of you guys might be embarking on some kind of a new start or leaving something behind and spirit is saying, what took you so long? A lot of you guys are leaving behind a situation that was causing you a lot of pain, was really getting under your skin and taking away your peace. And I feel like the message is it's absolutely time for you to go. You're ready for this fresh start and to trust your intuition about the situation and not stress out about it too much. Because I do see you guys getting nervous over the details, um, wondering how it's going to happen, being like, what's going on here and how do I fix it and trying to micromanage and spirit is saying it's okay to let go and trust and kind of relax to the situation. You don't need to completely like neglect your duties. We do have the Knight of Pentacles, which can talk about that need to, you know, pay attention to things and be diligent and get your work done. But don't be stressing about the outcome because I feel like it is going to go well. This is an ending to some hard times that I feel like has been a long time coming. And I'm also getting a message for you you guys that if there has been someone in particular who's taking away your peace that they are going to get karma and so if that has been on your mind where you have been stressed out about like this is so unfair I can't believe this is happening and like why is this happening to me I do feel like all of this is divinely appointed to teach you certain things you guys have grown from this situation and now you're ready to graduate and move on so you don't need to stay in this school forever retaking the test you have learned it and it's time for you to move on to kind of greener pastures so don't be afraid of these changes as they come in because what you have in your future is a lot better than what you're leaving in your past. And I feel like this is a rejuvenating energy for you. We did get the judgment card. So it's kind of a rebirth. It's kind of this moment of getting a fresh start and starting on something brand new. Your first card we got is the fool. So it, it might be something really new and exciting and really bold that kind of requires trust because you can see in the fool he's kind of striding off this cliff and that's the magic of the fool card is that he trusts that spirit will take care of everything and that it's going to be okay even though that might seem like a pretty risky activity and most people wouldn't think that's necessarily the best decision but the fool card is about having that moment of trust in the universe that everything is going to be okay and that that moment of kind of uncertainty where we don't have everything figured out and maybe the plan isn't set in stone and maybe there's a lot of things that we're playing by ear but when we are guided by spirit and we know that we are listening to our intuition which I can tell you guys are because you also got the high priestess then it's going to be okay when we're listening to our destiny to the call of our heart then that is that special moment for us that's leading us to greener pastures and a much better situation than whatever we're leaving. So it's a reminder for you not to stress too much, to take it easy, maybe even to look after your physical health and not overwork yourself with whatever this is. Maybe it's something that requires a lot of planning or you guys are just stressing about the details, but the message is like if you need to take a break or rest or relax, make sure you're not burning yourself out about this because I do feel like it's going to be okay. It's not to say just chill and just like 
you know, sit back and don't do a thing. But um, I feel like you should be making sure that you're feeling rested, making sure that you are looking after your physical health. Like I said, taking, making sure you're getting your sleep um, and that you're not completely burnt out by this. And then I feel like, you know, taking care of those details, making sure you are like looking through everything and managing everything and living up to your obligations, but kind of going easier on yourself than you might be. I think the message here is like, this might feel like a bit of a stressful situation for you and you guys might get caught up in the stress of it. And you might be finding yourself suddenly really worried, really freaking out, going over all those details in your head that come with worry. What if this happens? What if that happens? Oh my God, I need to do this by that date. And if I don't, what if I forget? Oh my gosh, like all the things that our mind can run away with. And the message is, it's, it's going to be okay. Just relax. I feel like your guides and spirit are with you at this time right now. I do feel like your guides are very much around you and they want you to know that they're taking care of a lot of this stuff. So be diligent and cover things from your end, but don't worry about the things you can't control. And I feel like in a way, it's also like kind of stick to your schedule. Like maybe you were thinking about, because you are stressed about this, maybe you were thinking about really like throwing your usual schedule out the window and just completely um, devoting yourself to whatever this problem is and just completely giving it all your attention and kind of neglecting the stuff you would usually do. And I feel like Spirit is saying, make sure that you do take the time to manage your usual things and to keep to your usual obligations. Don't stop paying attention to that because I feel like there's an element of like things are going to happen on time. Things are going to happen smoothly. You don't need to worry too much. You don't need to be um, frantic about this. Um, I always mention, you know, that Mars is exalted in Capricorn. So a lot of people would associate Mars energy when they get stressed, when they're going after a goal, they feel like it should be frantic. Like we got to make this happen really fast. It has to happen right now. It needs to happen within the next couple hours or couple days and I got to get it done. But actually Mars is exalted in one of the slowest signs, um, which is Capricorn ruled by Saturn, which is slow and kind of plodding and methodical. And so actually we usually get things done when we keep our stress managed and we don't let it run away from us. We don't let ourselves spiral out and start going after a million hypothetical scenarios when we keep ourselves calm and cool and just go after things one by one and tick things off. And I really think that that is the energy right now with the Knight of Pentacles for you guys. But this is going to be a really beautiful rebirth. It's really exciting for you guys. And I feel like you are so ready for this change. You are so ready to leave this situation behind because I can feel the stress that you guys have been under. So it feels like you are more than um, ready to go for whatever this is. So we also got Passion Ignited. Solar Plexus Chakra, Love Begins, Firm Foundation, and Authority. So for some of you guys, this situation might have been influencing your Solar Plexus Chakra, which is actually a chakra that can rule over feelings of safety. And maybe you are in a situation when we're in high stress situations, that can really take away our feeling of safety. It can get us on perpetual kind of fight or flight where our body is always waiting out for the next source of stress, waiting for what is going to happen next. And oh my God, I can't relax because I don't want to relax. And then I know as soon as I relax, I'm going to get some bad news or something upsetting is going to happen. So we end up being like so hyper vigilant and our stress hormones just burn themselves out. Our adrenals are just pumping it out all the time because that level of stress stress, you know, it does, uh, it does make us produce adrenaline because for most of human history, when you felt a big source of stress, you needed to like run from, you know, a tiger or something. Um, so when we're in a situation that's really stressful all the time, it can have a really bad effect on our health. And I feel like this is why, maybe why spirit is mentioning your health and just to kind of take it easy and not push yourself to the limit. So some of you guys might even need to take a step back from certain things. Maybe you've been pushing yourself to produce at a really high volume, whatever this is. And Spirit is saying, like, 
It's okay if you need to take a break. It's okay if you need to relax. Things are going to happen on the right timeline. And I feel like you guys need to look after yourself emotionally. And I'm just hearing a message that if some of you guys have felt out of whack with even like your hormones, or maybe you were eating a little bit too much, or maybe you gained a little bit of weight or something like that, it might be because of this situation. Because when we have heightened adrenaline and cortisol and stress in the body, it can cause our body to think like, oh my God, there's like a, a horrible stressful situation happening. Let me hold on to all this weight to protect myself. So some, or sometimes just emotionally we get stressed out and then we find ourselves overeating or constantly snacking. And I feel like there's a message to not be hard on yourself if that is happening and to just kind of Give yourself a little bit of grace in this situation. Maybe some of you guys are still stuck in this situation and you need to know that you will be leaving this situation behind before you know it. So hold on to that hope to get you yourselves through this situation, but also that while you're in it, I think the best thing you can do is to kind of go easy on yourself, right? Like sometimes we're just in really hard situations and maybe we're stuck in that for whatever reason. And so maybe that's not going to be the season of your life. Like where, you know, in the spiritual community, we talk about like, oh, everything should be amazing. Your life should be so blissful. And that is absolutely true. And that's something we should all work for. But sometimes when you're in a really difficult season and you're kind of stuck in that for whatever reason, and you're working to get out, but you're not there yet, maybe that adds extra stress to you. And maybe you read up about like cortisol and your adrenals and you just get more and more stressed out and you're like, oh great, now I'm now I'm really like damaging my body. Oh my God, this is horrible. And we, we get very much in our head. And I feel like you should know that your guides are divinely protecting you. They want you to kind of trust them and to ask yourself, how would you feel about this situation if you knew everything was going to be okay? And that you probably look back on this situation and almost laugh or almost look at it and be like, oh my God, those people or those like whatever, whatever it was, that work, that job, that friend group, that whatever situation you're in, you would just not even care at all. Like I mentioned before, but I was putting something in my calendar and I, every time I put it in, cause it's like a recurring event, the first letter is the same letter as some paper I was writing, like back in college, I guess I don't even remember the paper, but I think I put it in like all caps with exclamation points. So it was obviously something important. And it was like, I don't know, some philosophy paper and um, some subject, but every time I look at it, I can kind of feel, even though I don't remember what it was, I can kind of feel the stress that I must have been in at that moment if I like put it in my calendar like that. And it's so funny because now what was probably a really big deal to me at the time, now I don't even remember what it is, right? And so many of our things, if we think back into like that time in our life, it was like so consuming to us. And it was such a huge deal to us. But now we can look back and kind of relax. And I was even thinking about that. It's kind of a tangent, but like with history, sometimes, like I love the 1980s. Everyone loves different decades. Um, but I love the 80s and I love, like, I just think it seems like it would be really cool to be alive then. And I was like, I wonder, like, why to me that decade just seems so cool. And I was thinking, I was like, they don't, they didn't have as many like problems back then, like all the crazy current events that we have. But then I was thinking, you know, I'm sure it was pretty stressful at the time. Like people didn't know how it was going to go. But we look back at certain areas of our life and we know that everything turned out okay, right? Like there wasn't some huge catastrophic event that happened in the 80s and um, everything was pretty much okay. It maybe didn't turn out perfect, but it turned out okay. And so that's why I think so many people do have that nostalgia for other decades is because it's like, you kind of know the ending to that decade. And maybe even if things weren't great, they still were okay. And I feel like we need to kind of think of our lives that way. Like sometimes we get so hung up on like these hypothetical bad things that could happen. And what if we just reframed it to like, it's 
it's all gonna come out fine. It's all gonna turn out fine. We're gonna get through it. We're gonna probably look back at the situations that cause us a lot of stress and laugh or not even remember it or be like, oh yeah, I remember that. Oh God, I can't believe, yeah, I was really stressed about that. And it's not even gonna be at the forefront of our mind anymore. So I feel like you need to know that you guys can and will get through this situation completely unscathed and it's probably strengthening you in some ways. We got the firm foundation card. So it might be kind of building you up in a way. And I know that, of course, you don't need stress to build up strength. And I'm not trying to act like, oh, it's so great if someone's treating you badly or anything. But we can take positive experiences from everything we go to go through. We can keep that as a mantra that um, everything is happening for my greatest and highest good. And know that like no matter what is thrown at us, Whatever someone's intention may be, we're going to take it and transmute that into positivity and light and growth and strength and take the hard times kind of like an extra difficult gym session. You know what I mean? Um, like when you hit the gym, yeah, you could just walk on the treadmill and take it easy or you can go over to the weight rack and like take out the biggest weights you can lift and start pumping that iron and you're probably going to build a lot more muscle that way. So um Think of those hard times in life as processes to help you build muscle or tolerance or mastery of a certain area. And remember that, you know, your guides want you to know that like we come to this planet, we come to earth to learn things. It is a school. It, there's a reason why like, life can be so difficult on planet earth and that's because it's supposed to be difficult it's supposed to be a little tricky just like when you're in school you know i remember that um like in my language classes there was a few kids that knew the language or grew up speaking it but then they'd take the class because they were like oh it's an easy a and i was always like that is so genius and i wish i knew a second language but in retrospect they weren't learning anything at all, you know? And actually, I've had to use that language a little while recently, and I was like, wow, I am so grateful that I actually learned this, even though I'm definitely not fluent, and I definitely did not pay as much attention as I should have, and I wish I could go back to my, like, ninth grade self and kind of force myself to study a little bit harder, but I'm so glad I do know the pieces I know, you know, even though it was difficult, and I remember being jealous of those kids and being like, ugh, like, why did my parents teach me this language? Why do I have to be learning this all from scratch? And this kid sitting next to me, he grew up speaking it. And now he, like, can talk fluently with the teacher. And, like, it was so irritating to me at times. But what I've come out with is, like, I'm really glad that I pushed myself in the way I did. Because now I have another like thing to you so if I go to that country I can speak the language a little bit not completely perfectly but a little bit and so it's those classes we take where we're pushing ourselves where we're working hard where we're maybe a little uncomfortable that we actually learn and grow and that's why we come to planet earth we didn't come to just take it easy and lounge around and just have everything go great and just eat bonbons. We came to planet Earth to learn difficult lessons, to master certain things, to pass certain tests and grades and move on to the next and to, yeah, improve ourselves, improve ourselves and take our soul on like this soul mastery journey. So as much as it may be difficult when we're going through stuff, understand that we can always learn so much from a difficult situation and I bet if you guys look back at your past it was the hardest things that taught you the most it was the most difficult breakup that taught you the most about love it was the hardest boss or most toxic person that you can think of that made you finally realize you had to put up some boundaries with people you know what I mean so even though those things are um, really difficult to deal with and those people will absolutely still get karma like spirit is not like hey way to go you did that but spirit i think does align people with us like okay this toxic person if i put this toxic person over here it can help this person grow so it all kind of works on itself but of course they will still get karma they will still get taken care of it doesn't take away their responsibility soul wise but we can take our positivity from it and know that all the darkness sent to us spirit can transmute that into goodness and positivity and growth and happiness so let's get more cards so we got stuck in the mud rescue 
Magical Map Shifter and Bone Collector. So if you guys have felt a little bit stuck in the mud in this situation, I feel like there is a really strong message for some of you guys that it is going to change really soon. So get ready. Maybe this is that energy I was getting of preparing and that things are going to switch up on you. And so get ready. Start accepting and energetically aligning yourself with like, it's already here. I am free of this situation. I can't wait for my next stage. This is awesome. Everything is going my way. Wow, everything works out in my favor. And you might be shocked that a miracle can happen and that you're freed from, I just saw like a jail door being open. So you might be surprised by how much spirit can influence things and how things can come out of the blue. Magical map shifter, I love that card because it really proves that we are in charge of our destiny. And your guides want you to know that, that, you know, sometimes I think people think that like everything is faded. And of course, if someone believes that or that's their spiritual belief, it's fine for them to think that but as far as what I can tell is like I'm actually really surprised by how much power we all have over our destiny that we can choose it like at any time it's kind of like a pick your own adventure novel on this earth like we get to we get to certain things are kind of really faded for us but I kind of feel like it's like certain milestones like in a video game, you know how like maybe there'll be like a very open player type video game where there's a lot of freedom and you can kind of go around and do different quests and really choose which path you're going to go on and they let you have a lot of freedom but maybe there's like seven faded events um, that like you kind of have to go through to progress to the end of the video game. It's kind of like that. So you have way more power about how things go than you might realize. And so don't be thinking that like you're stuck. Realize that you are completely free and that, like I said, it might, it, situation might just free itself up really randomly and really out of the blue. I think when we got that trust card, I feel like your guides are asking you to trust the situation, trust that it's going to work out for you, trust that it's going to be okay. Use this as an exercise in faith because our guides, spirit, love, when we show faith, when we have a positive attitude, despite everything staring us in the face against that and looking really negative. But if we can look at those storm clouds and see the blue sky behind it and see the positivity that just wants to come in then that's when the magic really starts happening and I love this bone collector card I'm just finally noticing it I literally was like paying so much attention to the other cards and excited to talk about them that I didn't even really take it in but that bone collector card is such a powerful one because it really talks about us restoring ourselves to our most pure state so kind of like how in life we can accumulate traumas or we can accumulate diff difficult things and um, dysfunctional ways of behaving and that kind of a thing. But the bone collector is kind of always there waiting to give us back our truest and purest version of ourselves. And I can say doing readings for people that it's amazing how unblemished the soul is. It's amazing how much we always have this power to restore ourselves to our deepest self, to our truest version of ourselves, to the pure version of ourselves that we incarnate on this planet as, as like a pure little kid, you know? And when people go to the other side, they kind of return back to that. So it's like that part of your soul, even though you're accumulating lessons, the purity of you always remains the same. And we can always touch back to that and access that. And so that's why I think it's important to know that because it's a really uplifting thing to remember that, you know, no one has the power to like traumatize us permanently or to keep negativity over us permanently we have the power to um restore ourselves back to kind of like factory settings you know what i mean how sometimes if your phone is like running out of memory or acting weird or not quite acting right you can just restore it back to factory settings and that's what we can do with ourselves we can make ourselves just feel the most high vibrational version of ourselves and i am getting an image that spirit is showing me of someone surrounded in white light so I feel like your guides want you to know that that's a practice you can do to restore yourself to that place is surrounding yourself in an image of white light and also if you are having a lot of these difficult people around you you can envision yourself surrounded by mirrors reflecting in the other direction so that it will deflect their energy back to them but I feel like you guys are going through this situation very divinely protected and I just heard that like nursery rhyme like um I'm rubber, your glue, 
bounces off me sticks to you. And I feel like that's the message for your haters or whoever is causing this toxicity in your life that you are going to walk through this situation unaffected. I just saw someone walk through fire and they're like in perfect bodily condition. You know, they're just untouched by the fire. And I feel like that's you guys. So if you are stressed about this situation, if it's weighing heavy on your heart, if you are stressed out about whatever this is, you should know that you're going to be okay. You're going to come out perfectly intact and better than you were before and your guides are going to come in to arrange things so that things do get a lot better for you guys soon so let me get some message cards for pile three spirit can you give us message cards for pile three so we got grace and gratitude through gratitude joy expands okay, these were actually the cards we got for pile two so i don't want to use them so let's get some new cards for pile three specifically crossing bridges it's time for healing connecting mending and releasing and grounding go deep explore your roots and finally rainbow blessings blessings are showering your life so I really feel like there is a strong message for you guys to kind of like I said take it easy a little bit don't stress yourself out as this card says, it's a time for healing, connecting, mending, and releasing. So I feel like you guys have been through a lot and you have been through the ringer and it's kind of like it's okay to take a breath. It's okay to relax. If you have been going through it, I feel like you should know that like you passed the test. You have done such a great job. Your guides are so proud of you. And if you're you might already be leaving this situation and if not you will be leaving this situation imminently soon so keep your eyes on that keep your focus on that know that at the right moment at divine timing your guides will come in to remove you from whatever this is and in the meantime go a little bit easy on yourself don't be like holding your feet to the fire of course there comes a time when we do have to like push ourselves as hard as we can and just you know go pedal to the metal but there's also a time for rest. I just heard that song that's like, and every time, for every time there's a season under heaven. I think it's Turn, Turn, Turn by the birds. Um, and so, yeah, I feel like sometimes it's just about being patient through different seasons and understanding that, you know, whatever season we're in, we're there for a reason, but we can also remove ourselves from it. And I feel like you guys will be removed from this situation. And a great way to speed up that process is to um, practice some gratitude. Thank spirit and your guides for all the things they're doing for you you know getting yourself aligned with that attitude of like everything is going great for me wow everything's so awesome is such a key for manifesting and we can really do that just by listing off the 10 things we're grateful for when we wake up in the morning or 10 things we're grateful for at the end of the day thanking our guides vocally out loud every time something good happens existing in that energy of like everything is working out for me you know and then those things will start happening for you even if you can't see it yet it will and we can almost always have things to be grateful for like if you have internet imagine that for all of human history no one would be able to listen to someone's voice when they live across the world from them like we're we are doing right now you know so there's so much to be grateful for even if it may not feel that way all the time and it can be really hard we can always find something to be grateful for and so yeah also maybe spending time in nature for you guys but you guys are going to be taking out of this situation and made a hundred times better bless a hundred times over because of that so make sure you're claiming that make sure you know that in your core and make sure that you welcome that energy in because i do feel like it's happening for you guys soon so anyway i really hope it resonated pile three let me know if it did in the comments i love hearing from you guys hearing your thoughts and opinions so definitely let me know what you think and also make sure to give this reading a thumbs up hit the like button and make sure you're subscribed and have notifications on. And if you want to see my additional readings, you can also check out my Patreon. Link is in my description for that. You'll get access to over 25 other tarot readings as well as new ones going up all the time. And if you guys would like a private reading with me, you can also get that at my website, briarrosetarot.com to set up a one-on-one -on -one tarot session where I'll pull cards ex exclusively and especially for you. 
So anyway, with all that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you guys in the next reading and I'm sending you lots of love and light. Take care guys. Bye. Hey pile four. So for your Oracle card, you guys got financial health and for your tarot, you got the moon, queen of pentacles, two of pentacles, king of pentacles, the chariot, four of cups, and the page of pentacles. So wow, there is such a strong message of financial abundance and security in your future. You might already be there now, but some of you guys might be at this page of pentacles energy, even making a decision with that two of pentacles, but you are well on your way to reaching the queen of pentacles or the king of pentacles and just having a huge amount of financial wealth and abundance. I'm hearing beyond your wildest dreams. So I feel like this is going to be something that maybe some of you guys thought could never happen. Maybe you were like oh I'm always gonna be broke or just someone like me isn't good with money and I feel like there is a message about that as well about maybe some of you guys even having bad like habits when it comes to money or maybe not seeing options that are right there the four of cups can talk about that about you know an offer being presented to you but you not taking it so if there have been opportunities financially that have been presented to you and you have not taken them i feel like there's a message here to reconsider or maybe you're like i haven't gotten any offers but there's a lot of options that are at your disposal and the moon can talk about not seeing things clearly it can also talk about hidden things in our subconscious from like childhood or just bad habits we have that are so deep that we have a hard time seeing them deep in the subconscious which is what the moon rules over and kind of that shadow side of ourselves so maybe we had parents that said things like money doesn't grow on trees or maybe you know we just have certain narratives we tell ourselves oh I'm always a mess with money or like you know I can't really hold on to money I just always spend it whenever I get it or like oh I'm just not good at math I'm not a math person or whatever and um, I feel like there's a message here to kind of re-examine and that there might be opportunities right under your nose that you aren't aware of that you can speed up this process because I do feel like there is a message here that pile for success and abundance is your birthright a lot of you guys might already be at this point and you might already have taken advantage of some of those opportunities but there might be even more success or abundance or potential that you have standing right in front of you that maybe for some reason again sometimes it can be those subconscious beliefs maybe you might even be like in the spiritual community and have beliefs like oh well money is impure or I don't want to be greedy and take too much money like maybe you're already doing well financially but you're like yeah but I don't want to really um, be seeming like a greedy person by making more money and it's kind of like you need to step into what is the best thing for you and I feel like success like I said success is your birthright in pile four and I feel like your guides have this message for you of making sure you're making the most of those opportunities because I feel like they are pushing you in the direction of financial abundance. Maybe this is an important thing that your soul has to learn. Maybe some of you guys have a second house north node or a north node in Taurus. Um, maybe it's one of your destiny is to learn how to make your own money to learn how to manage money to bring in wealth and abundance maybe you have a transit happening there a jupiter transit through your second house and you're not even taking advantage of it you know um so yeah for a lot of you guys and that would definitely apply to aquarius's and aquarius ascendants so if you have an aquarius ascendant and you're not taking advantage of the second house pisces transit of jupiter and pisces right now then what are you doing and also if you're a pisces what are you doing because it's right in your sun right now so um there's a lot of different placements that can be affected by jupiter and you don't have to have those placements to have it be your lucky time but maybe you're having jupiter transit through your 10th house a great time for your career and you're not taking advantage of it i feel like in this pile there's a message of like what are you waiting for and why not fully lean into it and why not fully take advantage of it so if you have been on this path maybe you already are like obviously it's a general reading so different people are going to be at different stages on this path but i feel the end result for you guys is a huge amount of success a huge amount of abundance 
And I feel like spirit is saying though, make sure you're maximizing all your potential, making, make sure that you are taking advantage of every opportunity that spirit is offering you. Sometimes also those subconscious habits can just be things like, well, I don't really want to learn how to do this. Or like taxes are boring. I don't want to spend my weekends going over my tax code and trying to figure out how to save money. Like whatever, I'll just pay the full amount. And you might be surprised that you're paying way more. Or maybe, you know, there's a business opportunity and you're like, I don't really want to learn how to like rent out on Airbnb, but like you could be making so much money or whatever, some kind of side business, side hustle. Like maybe you want to open an Etsy shop, but you're like, yeah, but that would be too complicated. And you might be surprised that it's actually really easy and that like you're able to learn how to work Etsy or Airbnb or whatever the side business may be really easily and that you guys are actually quite good with money and I feel like your guides want to usher you into a stage in your life where money flows a lot easier and they are really excited and eager to bring you into this energy and they just want you to do like the work whatever work is needed to bring you there and they're like it's not even that hard let's just come on like let's just do this but I feel like my there might be some reticence on your part the moon can also talk about anxiety so some of you guys might have anxiety around money and this is why it's always a good idea to unpack our unconscious beliefs that we have why are we anxious about money do we believe that money's there's never enough money or that money's gonna run away from us or that like money is this fearful thing do we freak out every time we have to pay a big bill and we get in our head about like oh my god I can't believe it's so much money oh this is really gonna take away from the money I have for this I was gonna buy that but now I can't afford like or do we pay that bill really excitedly and with the thought of like, oh, I'm so glad that I have so much money that I, I'm getting to pay bills this high. Like, wow, what a flex for me that I have earned this much money that now I am paying these kind of big bills. This is awesome. Or I love the fact that I'm paying this bill. I just know that this money is going to boomerang back to me times 10. So this is freaking awesome that I get to pay this big bill. Heck yeah, I'm so excited. I love paying this. You know what I mean? That attitude we can have of expecting the best, expecting happiness can really have this ripple effect. And if we have fears and anxieties and distrust around money, this idea that it's limited, that there's not enough money, that if someone else has money, we can't have it, that like money is this difficult thing that is impossible to get. I see a lot of, especially women with limiting beliefs around money, like maybe they were a stay-at-home mom or maybe they grew up with a stay-at-home mom parent and they just think that pe women aren't good with money and men can also get into limiting cycles of money themselves you know or um, even just not pay attention to money and just be like well I'm just gonna play video games all day or whatever and it's really important that we all unpack these ideas because it's you know this is a physical world we live in that's why the pentacle cards are important and actually the magician card you know one hand is directed up to heaven the other is directed down to the physical realm so we're put on this planet for a reason the earth signs aren't just some like random accident that spirit was like well yeah all the other signs are really important but well we'll just throw in some earth signs why not um they're all equally important parts of the astrological wheel and the astrological pattern and thread that goes through this lifetime. So it really is important that we make sure to master money and we make sure to master that area of life in this time that we're on this planet, in this kind of classroom that we call Earth. And another thing that's coming to mind is with the moon and the chariot is that is Pisces and Cancer. So Maybe some of you guys, I do think water signs sometimes can have anxieties, especially um, Pisces and Cancer who are kind of more of the gentler signs. Um, they can have anxieties around money. They can feel like they're not exactly the best managers of money. You know, they can be used to existing in this astral plane and kind of 
not necessarily rooted so much in the physical. They can be kind of like up there and dreamy and very psychic and drifting around. But then when it comes to like making money or being really organized, that's not really the um, strength of water so much, you know, but it is something we all need to learn no matter what as astrology we do have in our chart, we do need to learn to manage money. So there can be this fear from certain water signs and watery energies around money like, oh gosh, okay, I maybe I mastered that in another lifetime, maybe, but right now, like that's just kind of too much for me. That's too rigid for me. I just want to dream around on the astral plane. And it's really important that you kind of take the time to like work past that and to make sure that you are giving your full thought to um, all your finances and exploring all the options you have, right? Learning all those things you need to learn as difficult as it may be. It's kind of like sometimes I remember when I got some furniture and I kind of put off putting it together because I was just like, oh God, this is going to be so difficult. It's going to be so annoying. There's all these different parts. And when I finally did it, I was so relieved and I was like, it wasn't hard at all. It was just um, yeah, maybe it took a minute and I had to read the like manual a couple times to piece everything together. But then once you get started, most of the time, it's really not that bad. Usually it becomes bad in our mind when we're putting something off. So if you guys have been thinking about starting a new project or you someone's presented you with like a business opportunity, but you're a little bit scared about it or you're nervous or you're you know, feeling a little out of your depth, just like, that's okay. What matters is that you really dig in and actually do the work because I feel like there's a lot of opportunity here and your guides really want to speed up this process. They want to get you through this King of Pentacles right away. And with the chariot, there's a huge message for success and for you guys having money come in and being incredible and you guys getting this abundance, getting this financial, I'm hearing also stability. So maybe some of you guys haven't been as financially stable um, but maybe if you have been financially stable, it's going to level up further and it's going to be, you know, financial, just abundance on a very high level. But yeah, I feel like your guides want to like level things up for you. They want to make things really nice for you. And I do feel like you guys in this pile will reach this stage of truly being blessed financially and your guides want you to know that they are offering you this opportunity. They are going to be presenting you guys with an opportunity for you to reach a lot of success. So don't overlook it. Don't just keep doing what you're doing. Be ready and be open to whatever this is. So we also got Triumph, Crown Chakra, Harmony, spiritual strength and discontent and boredom. So I feel like with discontent and boredom, there's a message that maybe right now you're a little fearful about taking some kind of financial thing. Like maybe you are like, yeah, but I don't really want to have to open this or I don't really want to have to do this or I don't really want to have to learn this. But it's kind of like if your life isn't exactly where you want it right now, if you're feeling like you could use an extra amount of money per month, or if you're feeling like you're not exactly living out your wildest dreams financially, then why would you stay in this energy? Maybe you're feeling a little bored. When we don't have money, it's like we can't even go out and enjoy certain things, right? Like if you're completely broke, you can't afford to go out with friends and go out to dinner. Although that can be a really powerful pro process and practice of going out to dinner like if even if you don't have the money and being like I am going to enjoy and not stressing again showing that faith in the universe but that is a story for another day but you know when we do have a full bank account it really allows us to live life to the fullest it gives us that freedom so you know, if you're a little hesitant about whatever this is, if you're a little bit nervous about whatever it is, just don't be. Understand and think about like, okay, my situation isn't great right now. So kind of what do I have to lose? Like it could be so much better. And yeah, maybe there's a little bit of a learning curve. And maybe I don't really want to have to sit down and go over all the details of this. And maybe it's kind of annoying, but it's going to pay off so much in the end. There might even be an ability to date more or to find a partner more if you have a better financial status um, or more of the partner you really want. If you already have some financial success, 
but you want more and you're wanting to date people in that realm, then of course, reaching that level yourself is going to expose you to those kinds of people and give you more options. So I just feel like there's a win-win financial situation here for you. And spirit is like, take this, take the bull by the horns, go for it. Don't be putting it off anymore or second guessing or doubting. You need to like claim this and do it boldly with the energy of the chariot, like head into it with like assured success. If you knew you were going to succeed at whatever this was, if you were like, I know it's going to go super well, then you would not be afraid. Of course, you want to use your best judgment in situations and you don't want to be reckless and just rush into something where you're just like, completely hands off and just letting spirit do everything when it comes to the pentacle energy we do need to be disciplined and we do need to approach it realistically and pay attention to things and not just kind of like drift away in water energy but we i feel like you guys do have this message that kind of you have the Midas touch right now and what you touch is going to be going super well and whatever you do there is such a potential for success and abundance and we did get the triumph card so there is this overwhelming energy that things are going to go well for you that things are going to work out in your favor that you guys are going to have a massive amount of success some of you guys are going to be really really wealthy um, and you just need to kind of know that and maybe if you are going through a season of not having as much money as you would like or not being at the place you want to be, that you need to keep that in mind that that is going to be that light at the end of the tunnel or that thing that's just, I'm hearing just around the river bend by, from Pocahontas. So there's going to be a lot of success in your future, in your near future. And with the crown chakra card and the spiritual strength card, I feel like a lot of you guys probably are pretty intuitive, especially when we combine that with the tarot we got. So you're probably highly intuitive and you can use your intuition to direct you towards the success. And, you know, I think sometimes that's where the kind of magic crazy ideas come from. It comes from spirit, the inventor that randomly comes up with some crazy, incredible invention or the entrepreneur that has this random idea for a business out of nowhere that no one's ever thought of. Those things come from spirit. Those are blessings from spirit. So being spiritually attuned and so many entrepreneurs, tech people, whatever, they practice yoga, they have spiritual practices, they go to see tarot readers and astrologers. I saw a quote the other day that was like, millionaires don't use astrology billionaires do and i love that i know that like ronald reagan at least had like an astrologer like on staff at the white house so a lot of people who are into making money or having success they do have very intense spiritual practices so use your intuition don't think those areas are divorced we make alchemy happen when we can combine elements into one so we can take that earth energy and that hard working like grounded energy and combine it with the spirituality of you know dreaminess expecting goodness to happen expecting it to flow easily being kind of up on the astral plane and drifting around up there with that hard working earth earthiness so yeah that's when alchemy takes place and so don't be afraid to like use your intuition on this and if you feel called to something and you feel like spirits putting this idea in you of like go for this go for this this keeps coming up in my head i keep thinking of this then you need to really look at that and even if it's something you don't really want to research you don't really want to take the time to learn it you guys need to so we also got balancing act dragon's lair golden palace and education so golden palace is another huge financial success card so you guys really have this hugely overarching message that you're going to do super well financially and have certain manifestations you might have thought were like yeah i kind of want that maybe i put that on my vision board but like there's no way i can actually get that and you might be shocked to see that like it is an option for you that your guides do want to make it happen for you and your guides are really excited to take you in that direction you might find yourself living in a beautiful place I just heard that line or that song from the Talking Heads, Once in a Lifetime. That's not, this is not my beautiful wife. This is not my beautiful house. So I don't know why they're playing that. But I feel like, you know, sometimes people put things on their vision boards and then they kind of forget about it. Or maybe that's why they're playing that Talking Heads song is like, this is not my house. Like, wait a minute, this is my house? 
I mean, I know I tried to manifest this. I know I said I wanted it, but like, I didn't think this was an option. This is my husband. Like, this is my wife. I, I mean, I know I said I wanted them to be really cute, but like, this person looks like a model and dang, I can't believe my guys got this for me. So they want you to know that you have so many options and whatever you can dream, you can do. Whatever you have in your heart, whatever spirit puts in your mind is an option. And I do feel like a lot of you guys, you're kind of hurtling towards this wealth. And for some of you guys, it's coming in very soon. I'm hearing within three months, your financial situation is going to change and you guys are going to have a lot of wealth. And if things have been tight, if bills have been hard to pay, if you have been having to budget and like squeak things out and just be nervous about how you're going to pay for certain things, you might be shocked to see how that changes. So if you knew that was going to happen, if you knew that all your bills were going to be paid, that everything was going to work out, how would you act? Would you be worrying about every last time? Would you be worrying about like, okay, my friend invited me to go out to dinner, but I don't know if it's in the budget or I don't know if I can afford this or, well, I was going to go on that trip, but like, I, I don't know, it's going to be tight. You know what I mean? You would just go for it. And it's not to say to be financially reckless because there are times in our life and we make things happen by working hard, by, um, you know, being, um, going for goals and sticking to it and, you know, making things happen that way. We don't really make manifestations happen just by completely sitting back and just like, dreaming but we've got to make things happen in the physical dimension and that's what earth energy is all about is the physical dimension so we got to put in that work but you know i feel like a lot of you guys are going to have a lot of abundance and i do feel that our thought processes our emotions our energies have a huge effect on things and when we can align ourselves with an energy of like I have so much money. Oh my God, money just rains on me. Money, money just comes to me so easily and money just flows to me. And like, dang, every day I'm getting wealthier. Every day, I just can't believe how much money comes to me. Then that will start manifesting in our physical reality. So as above, so below, right? So we've got to have this idea in our mind that then will come into the physical realm. So Maybe if you guys have been nervous about it, maybe if you have been trying to kind of balance your checkbook or, you know, stressing out about certain expenses, just don't worry. It's going to be totally okay in the end and you're going to have so much success. What's coming to my mind just now is um, Spirit just put this very strong idea in my mind of like, you know, you'll hear from certain like millionaires or billionaires that were like, super in debt, you know, maybe they went into debt like a $100 million or something. But when you talk to them, they're very not stressed about it. They're like, Oh, yeah. So I had to take out a loan for 200 million. And then I couldn't pay. So well, and you're like, what? How could you ever do that? But you know, there's this certainty that a lot of successful people have of like, I'm going to make it back. I'm going to be fine. And that's an alchemical kind of thing. That's that certainty, that knowledge that like, I'm always going to be okay. Um, I think it has an effect, like I said, in the physical, the mental, the emotional has an effect in the physical. Um, our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions affect our reality. So when you see like a really successful person, but they had huge amounts of debt or they um don't have like you'll they'll somehow be getting into like money trouble or something and you're like oh my god like i would be so stressed if i was in that situation but part of life is also being willing to carry with that kind of financial uncertainty at times you know because you don't always get to see how the story ends but if you can be in that energy of trusting that spirit will protect you that your guides will look out for you then things flow so much better and so much easier so if you guys are facing a really difficult financial problem it's like then don't let your head get all over it don't let your head start like getting down and just going into a spiral of worry and stress and anxiety, which the moon card can talk about. Keep your head in the right place. Make sure you're balancing your emotions and expecting the best. And again, with that education card, I feel like some of you guys are being called to educate yourself financially, maybe about other opportunities, maybe about certain things about your finances. But it's almost like make sure you are using every option. Make sure you're not overlooking anything because like, oh, it would be too much work to learn how to do that. Or yeah, my friend invited me to go in on their company. But like, honestly, I don't know. I'm not really big on investment 
investments and I'd have to, I'm just not really that kind of person. I'm not really financially literate. Well, make yourself financially literate. You got to learn, right? Because I feel like there's a lot of opportunity that your guides want to give you, but it's kind of like you've got to do that work to bring it into reality. So let me get some message cards for pile four. Can we get messages for pile four spirit? So we got vast vistas, expand your horizons. I feel like that's kind of what we've been talking about, about make sure you explore all your financial options and opportunities. Answering the call, the time is now. Impasse, reflect and redirect your energy, finding sanctuary, opening to your spiritual source. Any final message for pile four? Passion and pleasure, savor your life. So I feel like your guides, some of you guys, if you have been in an, an, in an energy of financial stagnancy where maybe things have been tough, I think a lot of times that can kind of suck the joy out when you're worried about this bill, you're worried about how you're going to pay for stuff. It's really hard to just be like super joyful all the time. You can do it. And it's a very powerful alchemical exercise to be going through, like I said, you know, it's a powerful moment of trust for those billionaires when they're super in debt, but then they come out on the other side and they keep being optimistic. It's, it's very power. And I know you guys are going to be like, well, it's easy for a billionaire, but some of them you find out about their financials and you're like, Oh my God, I could never live with owing that amount of money or something. You know what I mean? So, um, so of course it is going to be easier for a billionaire, but we can all take that energy of certainty of knowing you're going to be okay of waiting for, I can't wait to see what the universe surprises me with. I can't wait to see what blessings come. Um, but, but yeah, I think that if you need, maybe some of you guys need permission and you need to think about how having money allows us to live our life to the fullest, allows us to be present in the moment. Like instead of going out to dinner with friends and stressing out about how am I going to pay this bill? It's just like, awesome. Okay. I want this. And, and the thought of how am I going to pay for this doesn't even enter your mind or whatever it may be. No, it might not be dinner with friends. It might be going on a trip. Um, which can definitely be indicated for some of you guys with that vast visas card. Um, or it could be, you know, um, whatever, buying a new car, which the chariot card can talk about. Um, but whatever the situation may be, whenever we're able to be fully immersed in the moment, because we know we have the money, we know we're financially in a good place. It makes our life so much happier. And our guides want us to be happy. They want us to be living life to the fullest. So some of you guys just need to give yourselves that full permission to really enter the realm of financial success and abundance. And again, maybe you have this idea that being a spiritual person means suffering financially, or that good people, People don't go after money or that, you know, um, money doesn't grow on trees, all these things that our parents can unknowingly pass down to us. And you need to definitely have that permission. So this is me giving you the permission that your guides want you to have the happiest life possible. And I feel like they've been putting this money thing in front of you for a while. And it's like, this is your time for some of you guys. I just saw like confetti exploding. And so there's a message that the time is here. The time is happening right now. And I, I just, I said the time is here happening now. As I look down, I see the time is now says that on the card. And so exactly the time is happening right now for you guys to step into your financial abundance. You don't even need to wait anymore. You don't even need to do anything. It's already happening. But of course, explore all your options to make it happen even more. But I feel like you need to get ready to step into this new realm and get ready for all the options that might present yourselves and present themselves to you and be open to these things because I do feel like your guides really want to bless you. Some of you guys have been through a period of financial stagnancy and suffering and pain and now your guides are like you are ready to be rewarded. You are you pass those tasks. It is like summer after senior year where everyone's happy and excited and partying before they go off to college, you know? So this is like celebration moment. This is like we graduated, we are done with the tests and the challenges and we're ready for entering that new challenge, but also just celebrating in the moment and being happy. So make sure you're celebrating yourself. If you have gotten certain financial goals ticked off lately, make sure you kind of take a step back and take it in and celebrate how far you've come. Because I feel like a lot of you guys in this pile transmuted negative 
things around money and have turned it into big blessings and it's only going to get better for you guys pile for you have so much financial blessings in your future with all these king of pentacles queen of pentacles card like yes you guys are making it happen and i think this is your guides are so happy for you so anyway i really hope it resonated pile for let me know if it did in the comments i love hearing from you guys i love hearing your thoughts and stories so definitely let me know and also make sure to hit the like button hit that thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and turn notifications on so you find out as soon as i post and also make sure to check out my Patreon where I post all my additional readings. You'll get access to over 25 readings and new ones going up all the time. So definitely check that out. Link will be in my description for that. And if you want a private one-on-one -on -one reading with me, you can also get that at my website, brighterrosetarot.com to get a private tarot session where we pull cards for your situation in particular. And the link is in my description for that as well. Like I said, brighterrosetarot.com. So thank you guys so much for watching. I am sending you so much love and light and I will be back very soon for another reading. So take care of yourselves, guys, and I will see you then. Bye.